What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Now today, we are back for another daily market update. Before we get into it, make sure that you're following me on Twitter right here. My username is the same on Instagram. Let's just hop straight into the market here. We got $1.3 trillion. Bitcoin above 32,000, folks. We are above 32,000 um, slash battling 32,000 right now. Um, in my opinion, it's going to be crucial for us to stay above 30,000. I do not like the vibe of Bitcoin when it goes below 30,000 feels very weak. Um, and it just feels like, you know, it just feels weak. So we need to stay above 30 K, um, was 25 K the bottom. It's literally impossible to tell. <clears throat> There's many different, uh, people and things that say we're going to go to like 10 K or 15 K on Bitcoin. If that happens, you better believe that your altcoins will also crash even more. And this is the main reason uh, why I think or, or why I'm not buying anything right now. It's because I have patience um, and I know that even though these altcoins are down like 40, 50 percent, they can keep going down. They can go down even more. OK, so looking at Algorand at 40 cents seems like an amazing buy. This thing could literally go to 20 cents, right? I've, I've seen what it looks like for that to happen, and it is not good. So is this a, a, a bull trap right here or whatever? It's, I, I believe that this is a short-term pump. This is not going to last, um, and I don't think we'll get above 35K, uh, which is right up here, right? I do not think we'll get above 35K. I think we're just going to simply bounce around in here, you know, and just be very slow. I think next month will not be that good for Bitcoin either. Um, so I think we're in for a little a little ride here. You can also see the dollar has been going down since May 20 or May 12, right? We've slightly bounced up a little bit today, um, but that's also contributing May 12 <clears throat> or the, this slight uh, this big fall off right here. Basically, May 18, you know, May 18 until now um, has helped uh, Bitcoin go up a little bit or or stay stay up a little bit uh basically bitcoin is just correlated with the stock market right now smp 500 etc um and that's exactly what we kind of wanted to avoid we want our market to be decorrelated uh and you know not correlated to that stuff because now it's just another it's just another stock market basically but we will see where where this bitcoin goes Right now, we have the biggest gainer today being we have Waves still, Axie Infinity as well. I'm a fan of Axie Infinity. I do not hold any. I do not play the game. I play the real-life games. I have no time to play video games. I'm sorry. Cardano, even if they're play-to-earn games, too. <clears throat> My play-to-earn game is called Life. Uh, Cardano is at $0.63, cents, pumping 20%. Kava, I'm a fan of. Near Protocol as well. Engine Coin. All of the all, all of these um very strong like gaming projects I am a fan of, uh, but they have a long way to go. Now, Nap Gener right here sh is showing a guy on the order book uh, purchasing over five hundred million dollars of of uh, Bitcoin purchased at Binance spot prices. Okay, this guy purchased billions at twenty eight thousand to twenty nine thousand on Binance spot last week okay 28 so these people are entering at twenty eight thousand and twenty nine thousand, or at least this one big whale is right they are buying at twenty eight thousand to twenty nine thousand. so i mean is this just one whale trying to fake everybody out and basically uh try to trick you that the bottom is there and he's trying to buy the bottom there or is are they really confident that bitcoin is gonna double or triple right and I think he, we're going to see where he holds these too. Like if he holds for the long term on these, uh, these Bitcoin that he bought at 28 K. Um, but there, this is what I'm saying. There's a lot of entries. There's a lot of like massive corporations who have entered in the 30 thousands in the 40 thousands. 
they've literally bought Bitcoin up there, right? Um, so, I mean, that's that gives me more confidence on Bitcoin. AMTV says that Pantera Capital and Novogratz profited millions on Luna sales right before the crash. So we've already covered that Pantera Capital profited millions on Luna right before the crash. So they sold some of their Luna before the crash um, and then, you know, everybody got wrecked. Novogratz, so Mike Novogratz uh, from Galaxy Digital also apparently profited an insane amount here. <laughs> Um, CNBC covers Novogratz, who they say was selling Luna along the way and netted $355 million from its sales of Luna. Okay, and this has been confirmed. Um, and they say basically it, they might not be doing anything wrong with this, right? It may just be a solid, sound investing and risk management strategy, or it could be luck or a combination of both. But the point here is to show you once again that the big guys never lose. So if you do follow track with the big boys, like the big guys in this space, they don't lose, right? Uh, Mike Novogratz barely barely got wrecked from this. He actually made 355 million. Pantera Capital made 300 or made millions of dollars, right? Track with the big boys now. Very, very interesting article right here from Quant. This is written by Gilbert Verdian, I believe. Um, it says, The Case for Commercial Stablecoins. And this was May 17, 2022. Uh, so a few weeks ago here. Um, but basically, Quant's founder, Gilbert Verdian, is writing this about stablecoins. And he gives the whole little story about how algorithmic stablecoins are, are failing right now. Uh, through Terra, we saw that. Um, and then he starts talking about commercial, what he calls commercial stablecoins. At Quant, we call these commercial stablecoins. Now, what's an example of a commercial stablecoin? USDC. And they, that's the example they give. USDC, um, which is a privately issued digital currency backed by fiat or commodities, right? <clears throat> and then he says this will become an essential counterpoint to CBDCs. Um, and then he gives two more examples of stuff I've never heard before. He says uh, others include the USDF Consortium, which is an initiative by 10 FDIC insured banks uh, to create a bank minted stablecoin on a public blockchain. So I looked up USDF and this is them right here. They have the New York Community Bank, uh, NBH Bank, First Bank, a lot of different banks, actually 10 different banks. Um, in a consortium, and it's it's a membership-based association of FDIC-insured banks. So basically, this is a bunch of banks getting together and making a stablecoin, um, which is backed by. Look at look at this. USDF is a bank-minted, tokenized deposit referencing fiat currency on blockchain. That is the biggest mouthful ever. A bank minted tokenized deposit referencing fiat currency on blockchain. Holy cow. Like, what are we doing here? Right? So, deposit referencing is the big key here because all of these will actually be, be backed uh, by deposits. They will be backed by deposits. Um, and then they also give an example of the DCJPY token which is a yen-based uh, yen digital currency pegged to bank deposits. And this is developed by a group of 70 Japanese companies and banks to speed large-scale fund transfers um, and stuff like that. And then they also say uh, Volvo, for example, is using trading tokens. So basically talking about commercial stablecoins, I found one article on one good article on DCJPY. Um, it's basically born as programmable cash, um, and basically, it's it does it won't fail because it's literally ba it's based on bank deposits here. Um, and then they give a little bit of examples of what you could use this for, uh, but this is a very important thing. It has the backing of the three Japanese mega banks as part of a consortium of seventy four organizations. Very crazy. I've never heard of that. Shout out to Gilbert Verdian for writing that article and putting us on. Now we've got 
Apex, the true node as a service provider integrating XRP. So Avalanche and XRP have officially like partnered right here. They're building a fully insured bridge from Avalanche to the XRP ledger. It's going to go public by the end of August 2022. Uh, this is fully insured by Unore right here, which is a decentralized insurance platform. Um, and this is going to be called the Apex Bridge. It will facilitate a fast and safe transfer of XRP tokens from the XRP ledger to Avalanche and other EVM networks. So very cool partnership right here, um, integrating XRP and Avalanche. And you guys know Flare, if Flare is also connected to Avalanche as well. Little piece of news right here from MoneyGram, expanding a little bit on what we said yesterday. Um, Alex Holmes, which is the MoneyGram CEO, is basically confirming that they are eyeing a wallet deal in El, in El Salvador, and they're going to open a transfer platform with Stellar uh, for El Salvador, or aimed at El Salvador. And he says, if a country like El Salvador is going to make Bitcoin seamless with US dollars in country, I think that consumers through MoneyGram should be able to transfer Bitcoin to El Salvador or transfer dollars and convert them to Bitcoin. Right. He says, if that's where the world is going, let's participate in that world and let's see how we can fulfill that opportunity. So good, good news for XLM right there. Uh, we also have a quote from Ashish Birla, who's the GM at Ripple. He says, Ripple's solution is now a lot bigger than what Swift does. This is what I'm saying. Ripple is is far ahead of Swift, far ahead. And their offering is way bigger and their solution is way bigger than what Swift does. Uh, we also have Dawn 2.0 uh, pointing out. I, I just wanted to point out how bullish I am on Chainlink. Every time I get on live stream, people ask me about Chainlink. Seven dollars of, of for Chainlink is absurd. Like this thing is highly predicted to go to a hundred bucks, and it's one of the most solid projects on the entire market. It is extremely respected um, by a lot of smart people. Chainlink now has 1,511 integration. That's 1,300 plus more than its closest competitor. Um, Link Wallet addresses uh, have surged to a new all-time high. There's now 666,000 of them. Um, and then uh, at Consensus 2022, which is the, the conference coming up here uh, put on by Coinbase, apparently they're going to have a big announcement. By the way, I am no longer going to Consensus. I had a different opportunity pop up, um, so I will not be at Consensus, but I will be at NFT New York. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for NFT New York. That is a massive NFT conference. Um, shout out to anybody going to that. Let me know if you're going to NFT New York. So Chainlink, big, uh, big bullish on Chainlink right there. And to end this off, we have a couple different things. Reza claiming that Hashgraph is much more advanced than blockchain, such as Bitcoin and ETH. And then he proceeds to do a deep dive into, into the Hashgraph tech right here. Basically, Hashgraph is a consensus algorithm. Um, BTC, ETH, Hedera are all DLT technologies. That is why they are decentralized, fast, scalable, and secure uh, compared to centralized ledgers. Um, every distributed ledger has different participants, whether they are blocks in blockchain or nodes in Hashgraph, right? So he, he's going through all of this and it talks about the, the gossip protocol, uh, the gossip about gossip protocol. And then basically it comes down to Hashgraph is much more cheaper, way more efficient, way faster, way more fair, way, way higher security, um, I would say the blockchain adoption is way higher right now, um, but but Hashgraph adoption might uh, increase over these coming years. I think it actually definitely will. Um, so this is a good thread that you guys can read and brush up on your um, Hashgraph knowledge. And Hedera, nine cents, still an amazing buy, right? If we go just back to all time high, this is always my favorite calculation to do. So let's say 50 cents, right? 50 divided by nine. You're you're at a 5.55x on your money if you're just if you just have conviction in H bar, you buy at nine cents and you hold. Simple, right? Simple stuff. Or you can wait for this to keep going down. This might keep going down, right? My entry, my first entry was at three cents, 
three cents. It could easily go back to three cents. It could go to four cents, five cents. I mean, if you're okay with buying at nine, buying at six, five, all the way down, then, then do as you please. Now, the final thing I want to play right here is a big warning, okay? Trudeau has just banned handguns in Canada, and I want to play this clip and listen to what he says. And so today, we're moving forward. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. They're capping the market for handguns. <clears throat> now, I'm very interested to see what you guys think of this. Right, my political stance is truth. So if if a man like this says something truthful, I will agree with it because he's telling the truth. If he says some bullshit, if he lies, I don't agree with it because he's saying some bullshit. Right? Doesn't matter who the person is. I don't I don't take that in I barely take that into account. And that's a that's that is when you when you know you're actually devoted to the truth. That's how you can act. For example, um, if somebody very controversial like Charles Manson, I've watched every single Charles Manson interview on, on YouTube, every single one, hours and hours, right? He's a very bad man. But if he says something truthful, I will agree with it. I'm not going to disagree because he's Charles Manson. See what I'm saying? So I'm very interested. And that's just, I'm not saying that in reference to this clip at all. I'm just I'm just making sure you know my political stance. I call it truth. Okay, I don't do the whole left right left wing right wing of the same bird. That's what you got to know. These are left these are the left wing and the right wing of the same bird. They play for the same team, both of them. They keep you in duality, they keep you out of balance. Okay? So I'm very interested to see like obviously this you know, Canada, I don't think Canada has as an extreme amount of gun violence, yet we're banning handguns in Canada, right? I don't I, I, that's I don't think we have an extreme amount of gun violence, right? Um, and many people are gonna argue that this is because they don't they want to implement some more control and they want you to not have guns, basically, right? So let me know what you guys think. I basically have no comment on this. Um, you know, th this is just peculiar that he would do this uh, and cap this market. Wanted to throw that in some, for some controversy at the end. It, ca it can't be a Crypto Mason video without some controversial stuff, okay? Make sure that you're following Twitter, Instagram, join the Telegram group. Make sure you also turn on the notification bell, folks. They've been turning people's notification bells off. Screw you, YouTube, for doing that. Um, but that is all we've got. I love every single one of you and goodbye.